and secondly, the incorrect placement of constitutional uh, bodies uh, as it relates to where they are placed in the estimates. Ms. D Gail Deshera of the Government Chief Whip will um, elucidate well. further on these matters and then we will take your questions, bring you up to date on where we are. So Ms. Deshera. Okay, thank you very much uh, for responding to our request to meet. Uh, just to give you a quick update on the issue of the new ministries that were not uh, by order gazetted to be budget agencies under the FMA Act. Um, the government has accepted that it was that they should have done that. The order has been prepared. It will be gazetted tomorrow. And there's also a decision by both sides of the house that we, when we come to those ministries that have not been properly gazetted as yet, that we will go through the questioning of each agency, but we won't do the formal voting until the, the order has been gazetted, which is supposed to be by Wednesday in time for the appropriation bill. The second issue has to do with the early issue we raised about the constitutional bodies that despite the Constitution Amendment Act and the FME Amendment Act, both of 2015, did not reflect and were not in accordance with those amendments that we have agreed and that these constitutional bodies will be under a new section of subvention or contributions to constitutional bodies of the, of the docu budget documents so that all the constitutional bodies now reflected in the amendments of the Constitution 2003, the Constitution uh, Amendment of 2015 and the FMA Amendment of 2015, that these will all be reflected there with their breakdown of their budget so that we would have to then go to those bodies when we are um, in, the, in the examination of the estimates to go through all these bodies. So right now you have a mix up of some constitutional bodies are in the statutory body section, some are under local government, lo sorry, local contributions. They're mixed up, some are under actually under ministries. So all this has to be cleaned up and, and segregated. In addition to that, that will lead to changes in the aggregate totals for different agencies. So those that have been put under local contributions will now be removed and the aggregate total for those ministries will have to be amended. And that will go throughout the system where the uh, uh, headings and the totals for these ministries will now have to be amended. In some uh, cases, the capital and current of these bodies have also been put under the uh, ministry heads, and those will have to be extracted and put under this new section of the budget called uh, contributions or subventions to constitutional bodies. So it's cleaning up and bringing the budget into accordance or in compliance with the Constitution Amendments, the Constitution of itself, 2003, as revised, third schedule, the Constitution Amendment of 2015 and the FMA Amendment of 2015. So we're making some progress, which is a positive thing, and that clearly um, in the preparation of the budget, these were not uh, recognized or they did not address these issues, and they've recognized that these are issues that must be addressed. It's important for us to note that we did not take the position of having them recall the entire estimates to redo them. We could have done that because the estimates as presented are not in conformity with the law they pass. The Fiscal Management and Accountability Act of 2015 and the Constitution Amendment Act of 2015 are laws that were passed by the APNU AFC coalition government since this 11th parliament. They have presented a budget that is in breach of those laws. We could have simply asked that the, the estimates be withdrawn, be adjusted, and then rep represented to the House, and that would have caused significant delays. We have taken the position to bring them to a place of conceding that there was an error. And I think that is helpful because they have now acknowledged and they have now conceded that they are in breach of the law that they, they, they brought to the House. And all that Mr. Shearer is seeking to explain is to find a way of remedying that act without having to recall the estimates 
and represent them. So we have taken the magnanimous approach as a responsible opposition, not to be uh, a hindrance or not to be obstructionist, but we are helping the process by ensuring that our people who are knowledgeable in this area lend their expertise in getting it done. Even as we sit here, two of the members of our team who have been part of the negotiations are sitting in the speaker's chambers drafting the motion that two will, uh, with two of theirs, drafting the motion that will help to remedy this situation. So we want to put on record the PPPC is not taking an obstructionist approach. So all the delays that we would have had during the day is because we've been simply seeking to help the process rather than obstructing the process. And while we've had some concerns and people trying to find different ways around, the bottom line is they have now acknowledged that if the estimates are not remedied in the manner that Mr. Shero has outlined to you, then the only other option is for it to be redrawn and represented. And that will have significant time delays and it will make a poppy show of what is taking place here. So the PPPC restates its commitment to working towards ensuring this. And we have acknowledged that they have conceded the error and they're now seeking to fix it. All right, so we'll keep you updated from time to time. But right now, I think these are two positive developments as a result of what we brought up early morning when we came here. And that um, we think that uh, in the spirit of moving the process forward, that uh, we've been able to make some headway. Mm -hmm. And so we are looking forward to both issues being addressed as committed by the government. I'm not sure if I missed it, but did they say that they give a timeline as to how long it will take? On the first one, the order, the order is ready, it will be gazetted, and so we're expecting it to be fully gazetted. So by Wednesday, prior to the uh, appropriation, appropriation bill. bill, the issue of the new ministries will be sorted out by, by the legal requirement. The second issue to do with the constitutional bodies, what they're drafting and, and the work that is being done by the, the representatives of both sides with the director of budget and with the budget people is to make sure that they have not omitted anybody and that that reflects that. So the, the hardest part of what they're going to have to do is a technical issue and that is the reconfiguration of the aggregate totals for quite a number of ministries and then and the total, the, the total total of the entire appropriation. That we believe that, that we are hoping that by tonight, tomorrow we will have that. Because all of this anyway has to be done in time for the appropriation. In the interim, we will continue, as we said, to deal with the ministries that are new, that haven't been gazetted or haven't been uh, uh, gazetted as yet, um, but we will not vote on these bodies. And as you remember from earlier today, all the constitutional bodies that are listed today have been deferred to allow for this correction of the constitutional bodies. We are um, correct on the news. So we asked the government this midday if with all of these changes, they foresee going beyond the three days that they had laid out. Yeah. Um, they had said no. But would U.S. Chief have been pushing for extra time because obviously we lost half of A the lot of time already. today, absolutely. I, <laughs> I, I'm still doubtful whether we can make it, but uh, people are saying on both sides, and particularly the government side, they're saying, uh, as supporting the speaker and saying that if we have to go after 11 o'clock, we're going after 11 o'clock. My concern in the, in the whole thing, of course, for those of you who sat here before, is the Ministry of, uh, we're well, not local government, Ministry of Communities now, which region. are the 10 regions. That's, that usually takes minimum two days, and that's where the push. Um, to do it in, in one day, I think, is really quite difficult. And so, but I, it looks as if we're going to be going to the wee hours of whether it's tomorrow morning, tonight, or Wednesday. It looks as if we've got to push through. Did, um, did you? They are, they are absolutely reluctant to going beyond Before Wednesday. Before you go, Vanessa. Mm -hmm. Wednesday night, do you know why? Mm -hmm. um, I hear that they're, they're persons traveling. You're a key, you, you have to keep remembering uh, this issue of the one seat majority. It is, it is a. It's, a, it's an illusion in a sense because anybody moves, the, 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 the votes, the, are the votes change. Yes. And so, as you know, the Minister, the Prime Minister 
is acting for the president right now, so he cannot be in the House, he cannot be in the chambers, you know, or parliamentary committee. So that's one vote down. So that's 32. Then if someone else is traveling, that's another vote down. So this is something of, uh, I, I know, I've been in government, and I know when we had, we were one seat less, how extraordinarily difficult it was to make sure you had all your people there. So I, they, they have one seat more, and it is extraordinarily difficult. The president, I understand, is traveling. Mr. Greenwich, at some point, is going to this Florida conference. There's a president, I think, at Mercosur. You have uh, Mr. Williams <laughs> traveling too. Fatef. So uh, there's a FATF meeting coming up. So I think this is what is, it may be one of the considerations why they're they, they well, 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 we have a very important thing developing. If you look at your schedule, two hours were allocated for the consideration of the office of the president this afternoon. Mm -hmm. At the, at the time of the suspension, we had already utilized four hours, mm -hmm. and that is not completed. And you would have observed that there are still questions that are not answered and questions to be asked that were not allowed in the interest of time. And I think the <coughs> fact that the opposition on Monday moved the motion for a three days consideration of the estimates, the, 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 sorry, the government, I refer to them as the opposition, <laughs> the government, <laughs> move that motion for the three days, it is a clear indication that it can be interpreted, it, it don't necessarily have to, but it can be interpreted that this touting of accountability and transparency and good governance and full disclosure is not readily in their mindset. Because if you're to consider all of these agencies, you need time for the questions. For example, a number of the questions that we would have asked today uh, Adequate answers were not given. And even when they were, they, 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 there was a need for us to ask more questions, time did not allow for us to ask the questions. For example, the extravagance of expenditure is being hidden by, I will provide the information, on Wednesday morning. Now, on Wednesday is the appropriations bill. I don't know if any journalists will be running behind those um, copies that are supposedly to be handed in to see what are the indications. There is a clear extravagance of spending in these last four months. And I was making the point in the President's Minor Works vote. $95 million to be spent in four months as against $95 million to be spent in the entire year in previous administrations. And the answer given to this Honorable House was it's the President's discretion. But this is taxpayers' money we're talking about. This is not a contribution of friends and family, like what happened with the claim for the inauguration and the birthday bash. This is taxpayers' money, where the taxpayers out there expect us, as their elected representatives, to properly and adequately scrutinize the budget, to give them the assurance that we are holding the government to account. And that's all we are seeking to do. And when you rob us of time, you're actually denying a fundamental principle that you have, that they have campaigned on of transparency and accountability. And people yes. must remember that the, the president's budget was cut, uh, after the president was cut sizably in 2013, mm -hmm. and then it was slaughtered <laughs> in 2014. And so the, the minor works and all these things were cut, ICT. Including the presidential guard. Of everything. Yeah. Including the so, presidential guard. Um, the, the fact that what uh, Bishop's saying, but anyway, I know that you, I want to thank you and we will be giving you updates as things happen um, so that you will be informed and you will know what's going on. On the, on the we have a lot more work to do on the floor with the, the questions. <laughs> no, but so, I have one last question though, and it goes back to your explanation about the one seat majority. Promise yeah. me to ask about any likely challenge from the opposition benches to the point of disapproving funding in this budget? Because if that's not likely to come, then the numbers really don't matter. Well, uh, we'll see. I, I, I'm not saying, we have not, we've made a commitment. The president, former President Jack Dew, at the very beginning when he was sworn in, committed that he would never use the opposition side to do what the APMU AFC did in the 11th Parliament. Mm -hmm. And he would commit himself to that, and mm -hmm. our side to that. That, but he would use the opportunity to criticize. He would also stand up for what are uh, the interests of the people and what he felt should be done.
to improve the lot of people's lives. Um, however, that would not uh, muzzle him from expressing what he thought was a flawed budget. But at this point, we have, to make, we have no intention of, at this point, we have no intention of behaving in what we thought was irresponsible and reckless manner as the previous opposition now government did in the 11th Parliament. I just had would never never but uh, I at just this had point. Um, one question relative to the fact that we've gone over time two hours as opposed to four hours already spent if we go past 11:30 don't do you see possible issues where okay they may be not um, people will be so tired they won't be able to ask questions or <laughs> if I would just speak for the BBC I can't speak for the AP and UFC I know my guys in the opposition benches cup of coffee and we can keep going until 1, 2, 3 in the morning. I know our opposition that our members have been prepared, they've been preparing all weekend and they want answers from the government. The government said you must hold their feet to the fire and we are doing, we've learned too, you know, being in government, watching how they questioned us in the budget too. So they mustn't get very sensitive. We are asking very similar questions that they asked in the 11th parliament. Like, and the 10th parliament and, and previous parliament so that they, now the shoe is on their foot and therefore they have to adjust to, to, to answer, to be accountable to the best that they can and certainly the recourse to providing you know so frequently in the first what four hours you said mm -hmm. to that we will provide the information, we will provide the information is a little bit disconcerting because uh, they have sitting next to them the PS or whoever and staff who should be guiding them and providing them information. So in some cases, I'm not sure if they have the information, they're not quite sure whether to share it or whether they are not sure the information they have is fully accurate. Mm -hmm. Well, just, just to indicate, because I answered for the Office of the President, in order for you to get a budget, you have to have the totals of every line item, <coughs> and that is in a page before you. And I'm convinced that before Mr. Harmon, on every line item, is every piece of detail and how you get the total because you couldn't have that budget presented to the budget office to have those figures in the estimates if you didn't have that document. And there is a reluctance and an unwillingness to publicly share the information because of its political value. So this de de deflection of and deferral to Wednesday morning is to avoid the politics that is involved because they took certain positions 2012 to 2014 and you're now discovering that the very same things that they in their minds thought that the PPP was doing and accused the PPP of doing, they are guilty of doing and they don't want to have to reveal that. They've hired people without advertising. They've engaged contractors. Let me give you an example. It is clear that Mr. Harmon said on the floor that the two vehicles to the $21 million capital works on the office of the president have already been purchased. You have purchased it and now you're coming to the House for Appropriations. It's illegal. You have discovered that they are procuring capital items using lines in the current expenditure. Now, it is discovered that they, are, they have expenditure that they have incurred that they don't want to indicate that they have incurred it. They try to say it's bills that were used when the government is not entitled to credit and you don't get credit as a government. I serve with the government. You don't get credit for bills to be coming in in August for expenditure in March and April. Nobody does that. It's against the law. Okay, Thomas, thank you very much. Um, I'm sure that, that uh, we have lots of interesting things more to raise in the budget as we proceed tonight. So